Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 973, k closest points to origin. Given an array of points where points of i equals xi, yi represents a point on the xy plane and an integer k, return the k closest points to the origin, 0, 0. The distance between two points in the xy plane is the Euclidean distance, i.e. the square root of x1 minus x2 squared, plus y1 minus y2 squared. You may return the answer in any order. The answer is guaranteed to be unique, except for the order that it is in. So if we're given the points 3, 3, 5, minus 1, minus 2, 4, and k equals 2, what should we return? Well, let's calculate the distance for each one of these points. So the first one is going to be 3, 3. So remember that our formula is going to be the square root of what? So x1 we can always think of as 0 and y1 is 0 because that's going to be the origin, right? So we can say 0 minus 3 squared plus 0 minus 3 squared. Uh, yeah, and then so this is going to mean so this is going to be minus 3 squared. So this is going to be the square root of 18. What about 5 and minus 1? So we have the same thing. So we're going to have 0 minus 5 squared plus 0 minus minus 1 squared, which is just going to equal to, so this is 25 plus 1, so root 26. And then we have the point minus 2, 4. And again, we're going to plug this into our formula. And we're going to get, so 0 minus minus 2, so squared plus 0 minus 4 squared. So this is going to be 16, and this is going to be 4. So this is going to be a root 20. And we're given that k equals 2, so the two smallest ones of this are going to be root 18 and root 20, which represents 3, 3, and minus 2, 4. So that's why we return 3, 3, and minus 2, and 4. But how do we actually solve this question, right? Um, it's quite simple if we have this, but how do we keep track of the k smallest ones? Um, you know, one naive solution could be that we simply calculate the Euclidean distances for all the points, and then we simply uh, sort it and then return whatever the k you know smallest ones are. But obviously, this is going to require an n log n solution because we have to sort our entire input. And there's actually a better solution here, which is to use a heap. And we're going to use a heap of size k, and this is actually going to allow us to bring our you know, rung complexity down to n log k. And when k is smaller than n, this will actually be a better solution. So what do we want to do? The approach here, the first thing that we need to do is calculate the Euclidean distances. So we're going to say calc the Euclidean distances for each one of these points. And I kind of regret deleting what the distances were, but whatever. So we're going to calculate the Euclidean distance for each one of these points. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put these into a heap. And we're actually going to use a max heap here. And the reason that we use a max heap, even though we're looking for you know the smallest values or the closest ones to 0, is that let's think about this. If we use a min heap, the min heap will always tell us the smallest element. But that doesn't really tell us anything about anything smaller than that, right? If the smallest element is the top of the heap, then how do we figure out the next smallest element? If we have a max heap, what we could do is we could constrain our max heap to only hold the smallest elements. So that way, if the max heap tells us the largest element that we have, then if we see an element smaller than whatever the largest is in our heap, we can simply get rid of that larger element and then put the new smaller one. The heap will rearrange itself. And that way, the heap will only contain the k smallest elements at the end. And that's the reason why we're going to use a max heap here to get our uh, solution. So we're going to have a max heap, and we're going to run through all of our points. And at the end, like I said, the max heap will contain, it'll be size k, and it's going to contain the you know, points that we have with their Euclidean distance. And then at the end, we simply need to parse the points, parse points from the heap, because because uh, from heap because remember the heap is going to sort itself based on the Euclidean distance but we also need the the point in there as well so our heap will contain a tuple 
where the first element will be the Euclidean distance, which we calculated in step one, and the second is going to be the point. And the reason that we want it this way is because the first element is what the heap will actually arrange itself on, and the point we need later, once we have you know, our k smallest elements, to extract the points out of there. Otherwise, we need some sort of like dictionary which maps the you know, point to its Euclidean distance, and we have to derive what the point was for Euclidean distance. But what if two elements have the same Euclidean distance? It's just a nightmare. So we want to store the point with the Euclidean distance inside of the heap. So hopefully that makes sense. That was quite a, a bit of a mouthful, but let's go to the code editor. We'll write this one out and it should become a lot clearer because it's really a simple question. So let's do that. Okay, we're back in the code editor and it's time to write the code for this problem. The first thing that we want to realize is that if the length of points is actually less than or equal to K, then there's no work for us to do. Remember that we want the k closest points to the origin, so if we have k points, we can just return whatever points is, and if we have less than k points, then we can just return whatever points is. So we can say if the length of points is less than or equal to k, then we can just return points. Since the order doesn't matter, we can just return whatever the input was. So now that we've taken care of that edge case, remember that we're going to need Euclidean distances. So let's define a helper function to calculate those. So we'll say cell uh, def, we'll call it euc, and it's going to take an x and a y coordinate. And we're going to want to return math.square root of x squared plus um, y squared. Oops, y squared. And the reason that we don't have you know, 0 minus x squared is because it's going to be the same thing. Uh, since we're using the origin here, we can just do x squared plus y squared. Okay, so we have the Euclidean distance. Now we need to pair up each point with its Euclidean distance. So we're going to define a variable here. Oops, we'll say points um, with Euclidean is going to be an empty list. So we're going to say for x comma y in points, we're going to say, all right, points so we're going to say the Euclidean distance is going to equal self .uc of what so we're going to pass in x and y and then we want to say points with Euclidean dot append so we're going to append a tuple and the first element here is going to be the Euclidean distance and the second element is going to be the point so a tuple x comma y now we have populated our points with Euclidean what we need to do is create our heap that's going to do our processing for us. So we're going to use a heap here and we're going to use a min heap to act as a max heap. In Python, there is a max heap, but some of the methods are a little bit weird. They start with like an underscore. They're hard to remember. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a min heap here, but we're going to pretend it's going to be a max heap by using negative elements in it. Uh, that way you can use a minimum heap as a max heap by just making all the elements negative. So it's going to flip everything. Uh, it is a little bit confusing. And again, we're using a max heap to find the smallest elements. And now we're using negative elements to flip things. It is a little bit tricky to wrap your head around this. Um, but these are just things that you need to do, uh, especially if you want to avoid using Python's like built in max heap uh, methods, which I don't know what they are, to be honest. Uh, so what we need to do is go through our points with Euclidean and now populate our heap. So we're going to say for the Euclidean distance and then point point in points uh, with Euclidean we're going to say okay if our heap is not of size k yet then we can just push things onto the heap so we're gonna say if the length of he oops the length of heap is actually less than k we can say heap q uh, heap push onto the heap. What do we want to do? So remember that I said we're using a minimum heap here, but we want to use it as a max heap. So we need to flip all of the elements as negative. Uh, and that way we can use a min heap as a max heap by just making all the elements negative. So we'll put the negative Euclidean distance and whatever the point is. Otherwise, if we now have k elements, we need to start making a decision whether or not our current, um, you know, Euclidean distance and point needs to be put onto the heap or we can ignore it. And what we need to do now is we need to check. Remember, so if the Euclidean distance is actually smaller than the one at the top of the heap, 
then we want to get rid of whatever's at the top of the heap. But remember, we're, we're using negative values here. So really, the, min the negative Euclidean distance needs to be greater than whatever's at the top of the heap. I know, super confusing, but this is just what you have to do. Um, it's one of those weird problems. So if our current negative Euclidean distance is greater than whatever's at the top of the heap, so remember, you know, since these values are negative, if this is actually greater, that means it's closer to zero, which means it's a smaller number. Therefore, we want to get rid of whatever this bigger number is, right? Because the bigger negative numbers um, are actually going to be smaller in the negative scale. So we want a bigger number here. We need to pop from the heap. So we're going to say heap q dot heap pop uh, from the heap, and we're going to say heap q dot heap push onto the heap. Our new point. So whatever we were processing here. So the minus Euclidean minus u distant. Oh my god, I cannot type today. Minus uke dist and the point. So at the end of this for loop, our heap will be size k and we'll have our answer in there. But remember, our heap is going to have tuples of Euclidean distance and point, and our answer only cares about the points. So now we need to parse out these points from the actual um, heap. So we're simply going to return a list containing all the points for, so dist point in um, heap, right? So in, e in the heap, each element is going to be a tuple, dist, and point, and we just want to parse out the point. We don't actually care about the, um, the distance. So let's submit this, make sure it works. And da 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 da, -da. Hello. OK, cool, it does. All right, what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? Well, to calculate the points with Euclidean is going to take big O of n time. Because for every element in points, we need to do this computation. So this part is going to be big O of n. But what is the actual heap processing going to be? Well, we know that we have n elements that we need to parse. And we know that in the worst case, we would need to rejig the heap each time. And rejigging a heap or reorganizing one takes log k time. So that means our run com runtime complexity in the um, in the worst case here is going to be n log k. So that's going to be the runtime complexity. And then the heap is going actually, so what is our space complexity? Well, we know that we need to store the points with Euclidean here, which is going to be creating a new uh, list of length points, basically, with that new um, Euclidean distance pairing. So this is going to be big O of n on the space, because we have to create that list, which has the uh, points with the Euclidean distance. The heap itself is big O of k because it only has k elements in it. But because we have to create this points with Euclidean, it's going to be big O of n to do that. So to recap, your time complexity is going to be n times log k, where k is the number of elements in the heap. And then n is just the total number of points here. And then your space complexity is going to be um, big O of n. So that's how you solve this problem. A bit of a weird one because we have to use heaps, but we're using it opposite. And then we're using negative numbers to flip it. It's like we're using a max heap to keep track of the smallest elements, but we're then using negative elements in a min heap to get a max heap. It's really confusing, um, but this is just what you have to do. I think the Python um, methods in the heap class for max heaps are a bit confusing. I don't know them off the top of my head. I know the, the standard ones. So if you don't remember them in an interview, it could you know get you into some trouble. But just knowing that you can use a min heap as a max heap by just flipping the elements and the other way around, actually, uh, if you use negative values uh, with a min heap, you actually get a max heap. So that's something good to know. Otherwise, um, so yeah, that's how you solve this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any videos you'd like me to make, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I'll stop rambling now and let you go. Otherwise, have a nice day. Bye.